Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. It's time for the monthly Q&A. So, apology in advance to everyone whose name I will butcher throughout this video. Today, we will cover some interesting questions asked by our community members. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is a Xiao Qinggan, a newly invented tea that has been becoming increasingly popular in recent years. It is not a pure tea according to the traditional standard. It is a tea made with dried tangerine peel. Let's look at a photo of this product first. You can see a dried tangerine. Actually, inside the tangerine peel, there is the tea. Normally, poor tea. So, Xiao means little, Qing means green, Gan means tangerine, or mandarin, the fruit, not the language. The tangerine used to produce this type of tea is not the ripe variety in orange color, but a rather an ripe one, green in color. That explains the name Xiao Qinggan or Little Green Tangerine. By the way, in history, people added small pieces of aged sun dried tangerine peel into poor tea in order to cover the unpleasant flavor. So, Xiao Qinggan is not really a novel idea in that sense. However, Using a full tangerine peel to keep fermented poor tea is a new invention from about 10 years ago. By the way, I suspect Chen Pi, or old tangerine peel, has been used to cook or prepare tea for thousands of years now. And the best aged tangerine peel is produced in Xinhui district. Guangdong Province. Chen Pi is a very popular food additive in Chinese cooking. You may ask why people put poor tea into green tangerine peel. Well, of course, it's just a tradition in some poor drinking regions that Chen Pi or aged tangerine peel is added to tea. Actually, this concept of putting tea inside green tangerine peel was mainly the result of the overproduction of poor tea and green orange, so tea producers were looking for a solution for it. Both poor tea and Chen Pi get better with age, so naturally, the combination of poor tea and aged tangerine peel became a new product in the tea market. It is most likely a result of product differentiation using two already existing tea products. So, some people really like this idea, but others disapprove of it. In other words, a polarizing product. Personally, I prefer to drink pure tea, not this type of mixed invention. By the way, you may have often noticed a layer of white powder on the tangerine peel. That layer is not a fungus, but a chemical ingredient of tangerine peel, which is a sign that this tangerine peel is an old one. Normally, such aged tangerine peels are more expensive, so you do not need to wash it away when preparing the tea. Xiao Qinggan provides the health benefits of tangerine peel and poor, including detox, improved metabolism, and so on. Xiao Qinggan is the best brewed with 100 degrees Celsius water for 30 seconds. Normally, people add a full Xiao Qinggan to a tea cup and then add hot water. 
You can brew it as many times as you like, since poor tea and the tangerine peel remain flavorful even after 10 brews. I have a many Xiao Qinggan at home since I do not drink it by myself. This is what the tea looks like. And this This is the tea decoction. Again, tea manufacturers try to market this tea as a unique and a very healthy tea. Well, to my knowledge, it is not better than other teas since adding poor tea and the dry tangerine peel doesn't change the nature of either of them. Exaggeration of its benefits is just a marketing practice. So, buyer be aware. So, if you are looking for a new invention of a mixed tea product, Xiao Qinggan is a good candidate. This tea should not be expensive and beware of anyone selling it at a high price. Do let me know your experience with Xiao Qinggan tea, the little green tangerine tea in the comment section. With that, let's get on with our monthly Q&A. Questions covered in today's video include First, can bags opening and closing of a chest and ribcage. Next, Merle Thompson, Tai Chi waist turning. Next, Human Surf, Shaolin Origin of CMA. Next, Andrea Mozuri, Dao De Jing Chapter 47. Next, 1445 Tree, Power Generation Biomechanics. Next, John Stone, Shang Style Xing Yi. Next, Mike Tovish Fever, Calisthenic vs. Martial Arts. Next, of JRL Body Structure and Power Generation. Next, uh, Lix Bandero Bagua Power Training. Finally, Anne Lin Cheng Style Bagua 64 Palms. So, let's get started. Kim Bex asked a question after watching last week's video about the explanation of two martial art proverbs. Link is in the description. One of the proverbs was about the chest and the back inward and outward movement in power generation with the upper body. His question is, quote, When the chest extends, the back moves inward. Does this mean when the chest opens up, the rib cage moves inward so as to not to too open? When the back extends, the chest moves inward. Does this mean when the back closes, the rib cage also moves open the back so as to not to close? End quote. Thank you, Ken. This is a very detailed question. When generating power with the inward and outward movements of the chest and the back, the rib cage area should remain in a comparatively natural state by just following the natural result of inhalation and exhalation. In other words, the rib cage does not have to intentionally add extra strength compared to the chest and the back since the rib cage is not the power source of this area. It is the result of body structure and we should follow this natural structure and generate the power by working mainly on the chest and the back. I hope that answers the question, Ken. Thank you for it and let's move on to the next one. Uh, Miro Thompson asked a question about Tai Chi turning. He says, quote, Many written explanations of Tai Chi refer to turning the waist. Is this a misconception? I understand all movements come from the Hua. End quote. Very good question indeed. 
Let me give a brief answer today and then I will make a dedicated video to talk about this issue in the future. In Chinese martial art practice, two words Yao and Hua are used to describe the waist and the hip respectively. And a very common mistake in not only practice but also translation is that people confuse the waist and the hip because most of the old Chinese martial art training documents only mention the word Yao. However, the translation of Yao is just waist, while the meaning of Yao in martial art practice actually includes both the waist and the hip. That whole area is collectively called Yao in the traditional Chinese language. So, the confusion between waist and hip is caused by the translation. Of course, people can still make mistakes in practice even though the translation is correct, since some translators who understand the language may not interpret it it correctly in the context of uh, traditional martial art practice, thus leading to incorrect practice. This is the reason for the misperception you asked in your question. As for the relationship between the waist and the hip in Tai Chi power generation, well, it is a very important topic and uh, as I said I will make a video to elaborate on it soon. So, the brief answer is that the coordination between the hips and the waist is the key practice. By the way, the proverb Yao Kua Bu Fen or waist and hip without differentiation perfectly expresses the mistake caused by confusion between waist and hip. So, Tai Chi practitioners should remember this proverb and use it as a constant reminder to avoid the relevant mistake. I hope I have answered your question, Miro. Thank you for this great question. Let's move on to the next one. Hume Seraph asks about the source of a Chinese martial art practice. Quote, Is there any truth to the myth that Chinese martial arts stemmed from the Shaolin monk training. End quote. It is a great question and uh, actually very hard to satisfactorily explain without diving into details. So, I will make a dedicated video to elaborate on it in the future. But let me briefly answer it in today's video. Short answer, no. It is not true at all that Chinese martial arts stemmed from Shaolin monk training. Even more interesting, Shaolin practitioners themselves found it hard to clarify the source of their practice. I have explained many times in prior videos that Chinese martial art practice, including both bare hands and weapon training, was developed on the military battlefield not in any temple at all. Every Chinese martial art style has multiple legendary origin stories, but there are many historic military training manuals that clearly illustrate the evolution and revolution of a martial art practice. Of course, the Shaolin Temple and the many Shaolin practitioners very often repeat the slogan Tian Xia Wu Gong Chu Shaolin or All Martial Art Practice is from Shaolin. Well, it is just that, a slogan. It is just like the Chinese people claim that Chinese are the descendants of a dragon. I have to be asleep to believe it. So, Chinese martial art practice were developed in military training and evolved with time. Also, many famous martial art styles such as Xing Yi, Tai Chi and Ba Gua 
were directly derived from ancient military training. Of course, some famous internal styles practitioners might have practiced Shaolin and likewise, some Shaolin monks may have practiced internal styles as well. Nowadays, some Shaolin monks do practice Tai Chi. However, individual practice cannot be evidence of the roots of a style. Again, I will make a dedicated video to elaborate on it in the future. Thank you, Himmelsurf. I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Andrura Morizzi, aka Nei Jiaquan, a student of mine in Italy who teaches the three internal styles as well as other styles, asked, quote, the explanation of the Dao De Jing 47th chapter, Bu Chu Hu Zhi Tian Xia, think that can be very interesting, especially for Xiu Dao students. Also, want to ask you, have you ever considered the possibility to dedicate a video series to the Dao De Jing community? Think this could be a real improvement for the Chinese martial art community, and not only. End quote. <coughs> Thank you, Andrea. Before answering these questions, let me explain that sentence first. It is from the 47th chapter of Dao De Jing, or the Book of Dao. In that chapter, Lao Zi introduces the key concept of Bu Chu Bu Zhi Tian Xia. Bu means without, Chu means moving outward, or Traveling, Hu means door of a house, Zhi means understand, Tian Xia means things in the world. Put together, it means that the sages can understand the world without going outside the door. Philosophically speaking, this sentence indicates that Lao Zi believed principles can be gained by deduction not by feelings and experiences alone. It is part of Lao Tzu's epistemology. In Xiu Dao practice, this sentence means that in order to achieve the elixir in practice, Xiu Dao practitioners should focus on the internal practice approach instead of an external approach when working on energy refinement process, including all of the Jing, Qi, and the Shen. So, Hu or Door in Xiu Dao can mean Mystery Gate or Xuan Guan. So, to achieve the Great Dao, one should focus on the practice inside of the Mystery Gate. About the concept of a Mystery Gate, please check out my video titled Mystery Gate or Xuan Guan in Xiu Dao 7th. Link is in the description. It is one of the most important concepts in Taoist internal cultivation practice. So, this sentence can be used in guiding Xiu Dao practice, and it has been used this way for thousands of years. As for your suggestion about making a dedicated video series on Dao De Jing commentary, it is a great idea. Actually, many years ago, I taught Dao De Jing commentary in Xiu Dao practice at a Chinese community center for about a year. Unfortunately, I did not record most of the videos. Those would have been at least a hundred hours worth of information. However, any serious teaching about ancient philosophy and its application would be very hard to explain in a video format, especially when not in one's mother tongue language. I will see what I can do to suitably deliver this to Western audience. So, Andrea, thank you for your questions and suggestions. I hope I have answered it for you. Let's move on to the next one. 1445 Troy asked a question about the demonstration in the video on Shang Yunxiang from two weeks ago. 
Let me replay that clip first. Okay, Xiang Xing Shu, Xuan Method. Now, let me read his question. Quote, During your demo, are you generating power from the waist pulling back at the last moment, creating a whip at the pinnacle of the movements? End quote. <coughs> Actually, this question contains two parts and each part focuses on a different topic. The first part is about the nature of the force, whether a whipping force or not, and the second part of the question is about timing the power releasing movement. The short answer to the first part of your question is no. It is not a whipping force, it is a splitting force since the aim of the force is to break something with the two opposing forces. The power is generated by the hip and the waist, but transferred to the arms so that the power can be applied to the opponent's body. By the way, the difference between a whipping force and the other type of forces, such as splitting force or penetrating force, is that a whipping force will transfer the power segment by segment from the root of the power to its end. I have explained this topic in many prior videos. For example, check out my video titled Understanding Xingyi Ba Gua and Tai Chi Through Contracts No. 5. Fist. Link is in the description. In that video, I have explained the differences between whipping force and other types of forces in detail. And for the second part of your question, the short answer is yes, since power needs speed, and in general, the higher the speed, the stronger the power generation. Also, rotation, especially of the hip and the waist area, should be fast and short, so as you said, the power should be generated at the pinnacle of the movement. I'm impressed by your insightful observation. As mentioned in last week's video, being able to observe good practice and then being able to imitate it is an essential skill in martial art practice. So, thank you for your great question, Troy. I hope I have answered it for you. Let's move on to the next one. John Stone commented on a video that I posted two weeks ago. This video is about Shang Yunxiang, one of the best Xing Yi practitioners in history. In that video, I introduced his background and the style that he created. If you have not watched it yet, please have a look, link is in the description. So, Zhuang Stone's question is, quote, This style of Xing Yi seems to be missing the round body spiral energy. Is this much more of a hard style lacking the sticking adhering qualities? End quote. To which 1445 Troy, a community member, responded, quote, Perhaps it is a matter of emphasis and trade offs. Shang Yunxiang being smaller needed to emphasize power development over other aspects. End quote. Actually, this is a great question, including both comments. I'd like to explain it in today's video. The term drawing stone used is sticking adhering or zhan jin in Chinese, a term used to describe that one power sticks on the other power of the opponent. So, let me explain. <clears throat> First of all, you have to know that there is no such sticking adhering power in Xing Yi practice at all. Any Xing Yi movement does not show the sticking adhering power in form practice. Sticking adhering power or 
Zhan Jin is the result of uh, applying a power to a practice partner or opponent. It is a practice that one's power follows the movement of one's opponent, and it feels as if the power is stuck on the other's power. It is an application term, not a practice term. You cannot show a sticky power without application. Slow motion or having a sticking feeling in any demonstration is not the real sticky power. It is either just a slow motion or just a waving movement. We have to define the concept of sticking adhering power first. One movement cannot be sticking adhering by itself. It has to work with another movement. This is the key factor, a very confusing term in Chinese martial arts indeed. By the way, in the Chinese martial arts community, there is a popular term to describe someone's practice lacking real martial power. It is Nian Hu. Nian means sticky, Hu means glue. Put together, it means that one's movement is not sharp and clear. A negative term indeed. I'm so happy to see someone finally raised these questions and gave me a chance to clarify it. And uh, round the body spiral energy, the term used by Zhuang Stone in the comment, actually contains two terms. One is round the body, and the other is spiral energy. I have to tell you that there's no relationship between a round body and a spiral energy. A round body is just a body structure mainly used by some Shanxi style Xing Yi and by some Hebei style Xing Yi as well. Spiral energy is a type of energy that has the twisting motion in a linear or non-linear movement. And spiral energy is not created by a round body structure, and a round body structure is not the best body structure for generating such type of energy. Also, it is a very common misunderstanding between round body and spiral energy. I hope it is clear now. As for 1445 Troy's comment on John Stone's comment, well, Shang Yunxiang was one of the best Xing Yi masters in history. His power is strong, but a movement can contain many different types of power, including straight and spiral. You have to know that a spiral power usually contains a straight line of power as well, or else it won't be penetrative. It is a very important concept, and I will explain it more in the future. Thank you both for your comments that gave me an opportunity to elaborate on it in today's video. I also hope my explanation is clear enough to clarify these misunderstandings. Let's move on to the next one. Bruce Landgren asked about Xiu Dao practice. Quote, in the practice of when uh, I bring the hands in I experience a very noticeable internal physical contraction of the tissue along the central line and down toward the lower abdomen. When the hands move up, I got some physical expansion of the tissue in the center of the torso solar plexus area, sort of that I, if I breath in but without the breathing. Does this sound correct? End quote. Yes. The energy experience is correct, and if someone practices it correctly, it is the first step to experiencing this type of energy sens sensation. With time, the energy sensation will become subtler and subtler, which is an indicator of progress. It is worth noting that not everyone will have the same energetic experience when practicing. However, at the beginning of any practice, 
any energetic sensitivities, including tingling, heaviness, warmth, and so on, are considered correct. So, thank you for your question, Bruce. I hope I have answered it for you. Let's move on to the next one. <coughs> McTowish Fever Ask quote that training calisthenic and ten tendon force go against uh, internal martial art practice. I'm trying to lose some weight without restoring to weight training, but body weight and uh, calisthenic training that enhance the tendon force also is possibly. End quote. Good question. Any calisthenic and uh, tendon force training does not go against internal martial art concepts. As long as it can help the body improve its flexibility, strength, and any other qualities, it would eventually help the practice of internal cells. Also, I'd like to point out that it is not about any negative impact of modern physical training, but it is about how to apply it to improve the practice of internal cells. For example, Consider weightlifting. There is no harm at all in weightlifting as long as you also train for speed and flexibility as required by the martial art style. That is the general principle of it. I hope I have answered the question. Let's move on to the next one. Over JRL asked a very interesting question about body structure in body generation. This is a follow-up question to his question in last month's Q&A video about Ming Men and Jin. Link to his question in last month's Q&A is in the description. His follow-up question is quote, Does drawing the bow Loading the shell is in our body the storing, placing, and the concentrating the power there. All the back is the bow or the cannon. What if our face is pointing down? Does the power go all the way up to the back, to the shoulders, and descend down to the arms to be FA eventually by the fist? Or is there a shortcut? End quote. To answer this question, we have to know that very often some expressions used in describing martial art practice, such as the body is like a bow and so on, can be very confusing if we understand and interpret them literally. And uh, this is one of the major reasons for many incorrect practices. For example, as for the bow and the cannon, any part of the body can be the bow and the cannon depending on where the power is initiated. So, the whole body, the bike, the leg, the arm, the chest, and the many many areas of the body, as long as they can move, they can become a bow and a cannon. Energy used in martial art combat is not stored but applied. Having a correct body structure that can strengthen the martial power is the key, but it has to be done naturally. So, overbending or curving will go against the principle of being natural. <coughs> Furthermore, as you stated in your question, if the fist is pointing down, then the power will still be initiated by the root of the fist, such as the shoulder, back or even hips, depending on the nature of the power. Sometimes, the body has to bend over as well in order to send the power to the downward pointing fist. For example, the Chen style Tai Chi movement in the first routine, Ji Di Chui or striking the ground fist, actually requires the body to lean forward in order to send the power downward with the fist. So, body structure aims to facilitate the power generation and any 
different body part may be involved in such a body structure adjustment to release a strong power. Now let me demonstrate this movement to illustrate this concept. The Ji Di Chui movement. Now let me add some speed. Oh, for JRL, I hope I have answered all of your questions. Thank you, and let's move on to the next one. Links Bandero asked if standing practice is necessary to the development of the internal power of Bagua, or does circle walking develop power in a more dynamic way? Thank you, Links. Bagua is a circle walking based style. Unless you add some dynamic practice into standing training, then standing practice will not bring much benefit in terms of internal power cultivation. Any martial power cultivation practice needs speed and static stance training will not provide such benefit. However, during the circle walking practice, any techniques can be practiced which will definitely improve the internal energy cultivation for use in a self-defense situation. This is why Bagua practice should focus on circle walking. Power in a martial art is the dynamic concept which should be practiced in a dynamic state. Thank you for such a good question, Links. I hope I have answered it. Now, let's look at the final question for today. Anna Lin asked about the necessity to practice six four palms in the Cheng style Bagua system. Quote, Throughout the years, I have encountered quite a bit of controversy around the topic of six four palms changes in the Cheng style Bagua system. Some people seem to believe that they are an unnecessary elaboration of the Bagua Zhang system, and perhaps even a distraction from the core practices, which prioritize the development of power and energy, etc. What is your view on this subject, and what are the main benefit purpose of expanding the form of Bagua Zhang practice to 64 pounds? End quote. It is a very interesting question. Any practice of the style is necessary, especially for someone who really wants to master a style. The 64 palm practice is an important building block of Cheng style Bagua. In my Bagua introduction videos, I mentioned that due to many reasons, for example, the lack of learning opportunities. Most Bagua practitioners do not have the opportunity to practice the six four palms, or have not fully learned the entire practice. Then, if they claim that six four palms in the Cheng style Bagua system is unnecessary or even a distraction from the core practice, please make sure they have learned the six four palms to a good level in the first place. Even though the eight big palm is the core practice of any Bagua style, including the Cheng style, the techniques contained in the eight big palms are insufficient by themselves to demonstrate a better systematic Bagua practice. Also, it is always difficult to determine the term core practice. For example, someone can say the eight big palms are the core practice, while others may believe that the first two big palms are the core practice. And someone may even believe only the fourth palm to be the core practice. So, depending on your learning objectives, you can choose 
whatever content as the core practice, since it is a moving target. And now, if someone claims the moving target to be the only target, then that is just wrong. Sage for Pumped practice is the elaboration of the eight big pumps, not a distraction if you know how to practice them correctly. Again, if anyone makes such a claim, they should demonstrate their understanding of the six four pumps. By the way, I have also heard similar claims before, so thank you for asking this question, and I hope my answer makes sense. Those were all the questions for today. Thank you all for your questions, and I hope you found my answers informative. As always, please do not hesitate to ask a follow up or enter new questions. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.